Hello there, and welcome to episode 73 of Coffee Break Blogging. Today, we're going to jump right into how to easily insert opt-in forms inside of your actual blog post. Now, first of all, why is this even a topic, really? I mean, we so in, in episode 72, we did talk about how having something called content upgrades inside of your actual blog content is a really effective way to get people to get onto your list. So basically, you set up a lead magnet that goes right alongside the blog post. So you'll have a unique lead magnet for that blog post. Very effective strategy, actually. But the reason why we're doing episode 73 here is because if you've ever tried to put an opt-in form Inside the post editor of WordPress, you'll find that it can really be annoying. Essentially, what happens is the post editor, that little what you see, what you get interface that you type your blog post into, it doesn't handle HTML very well. Uh, if you put in HTML, let's, so let's say you go into Aweber and you get the opt-in form code that it gives you and paste it directly into the editor inside of WordPress, chances are it's going to screw up your code. It's not going to look right when you finally publish it. So it is, and it's just the nature of it. I mean, I've said this before on the podcast and definitely in many aspects of the Blog Marketing Academy, but the, the truth is WordPress was never designed to be a marketing platform. It's designed to be a blog platform. So therefore, the editor and the functionality of WordPress out of the box is designed to write content in. It's not designed to put full on HTML for opt-in forms in the editor. So we need to look at different ways of putting those things in there because we know this is such an effective strategy. Now, the first one I mentioned in the last episode, but it's lead boxes. So lead boxes is a function of the lead pages platform. And you probably heard about lead pages in a lot of different places because they're just very well known in the whole internet marketing space. Um, and, uh, you know, Lead Pages is a great product. Like I said in episode 72, I'm not a big fan of their landing pages only because they're not that flexible. But the thing is, I also realize that I'm a unique breed in the fact that I come from a very geeky background and I know how to go on there and hack up the code and all that stuff. So I'm probably not actually their ideal target market when it comes to their landing pages. Land their landing pages are designed to be super simple and pretty much impossible to screw up. But they've got this functionality of lead boxes, which is actually really nice. Um, it's, it's a little overkill just to pay for lead pages if lead boxes is the only thing that you want to use. And in fact, there's other options I'm going to mention here if you will find yourself only wanting the lead box functionality. But it's a very simple solution, uh, very easy. It makes setting up these two-step opt-ins that you could integrate very easily into your blog post just child's play. It's super easy to do. So lead boxes is definitely a way to put nice opt-ins. The funny thing is they don't even look like an opt-in. They look like a standard hyperlink or a button or even an image if that's what you want it to link to. But only when they click on it does it pop up the opt-in. So it's, it's very effective in how it integrates. Now, what if you don't have a lead pages account or, you know, so... Do we need to get a lead pages account if all you really want is lead boxes? And the answer is no, there are alternatives. So I'm going to mention a few. I'm not going to get into a full on review on them. I just want to make mention of a couple of them. One is Optin Monster. So if you've checked out Optin Monster, you realize it can pretty much do any kind of opt-in form that you want for your blog. It'll do pop-ups, it'll do exit pops, it'll do on-screen opt-in forms, and yes, it can also do two-stage opt-in. So you, it, it can set up a system where you, you click a link or click a button and it will trigger the opt-in form. So the Optin Monster is perfectly capable of doing that. So if you have an Optin Monster, you can actually use that as a lead box alternative. Um, and if you don't have Optin Monster, you can go and check it out. Now, another one I wanted to bring up, it used to be called Hybrid Connect. Now, Hybrid Connect was a plugin that I've talked about the Academy before, and it was a very nice plugin because it was very flexible in what it did. Now, since I originally brought up Hybrid Connect, 
it now has been discontinued and replaced with one that they call Thrive Leads. Now, I have not used the product since they rebranded it to Thrive Leads, but I have checked out the sales page and it looks very effective. Now, Hybrid Connect was able to easily put in opt-in forms inside of a blog post uh, and do two-stage opt-ins in the whole nine thing, uh, whole nine yards. And I, I, I highly doubt that they're going to take that functionality out of Thrive Leads. So Thrive Leads definitely might be an option to check out. Now, we're going to go into some more specific opt-in form tools for WordPress coming up in episode 75. So you can basically hold two for about a week, and we'll be covering more specific WordPress plugins for this purpose. And I want to jump into one that's more of a generic um, because it's not designed for opt-in forms per se. However, you can certainly use it for that. And it's called Global Content Blocks. Now, the cool thing about the Global Content Blocks plugin is that, well, A, it's free, so you know people like that. But the other thing is that you could put anything that you want, any kind of code. You could even put, I think you could even put PHP code in there. You could do all kinds of things. And basically, it will not get screwed up by the editor. And on top of that, you can insert it anywhere you want on your site by using a simple short code. So it could be a uh, banner ad code. It could be, uh, you know, whatever. It could be a call to action to one of your products that you want to integrate into several different places across your content, but modify from just one single location. You can use global content blocks for that, but you can also use it for opt-in forms. So any solution out there that will give you an opt-in form, even if you just go in inside of your MailChimp account or your Aweber account and build one with their system and get the HTML, you can set it up as a block inside of global content blocks and then simply insert it into the middle of any content you want using a simple short code. It's nice and simple. It, it, it basically means the editor's not going to screw up your HTML, and it's a beautiful thing. Now, lastly, I want to make mention of one that I've only played with a little bit, but I had never heard of it until recently, and it was called Engageifier. Now, I might be pronouncing that wrong, but it's basically engage, like with the G and then I and then fire, engageifier.com. Now, what this is, and I've actually played around with it because I went ahead and bought it, it's actually really powerful in terms of creating uh, all kinds of different pop-up forms. It could be exit pops. It's just incredible what it can do. But the cool thing that it does is that you basically have a drag-and-drop interface to design any type of pop-up form that you want. So imagine taking the lead boxes functionality, and instead of taking just their template and all you can modify is the image and the text, Engageifier allows you to basically build anything you want and put it inside that box. So it's very, very powerful, and the and the the way that it works, the the uh, drag and drop interface for it is actually incredibly easy to use, very intuitive, very fast. So it's actually a really cool product, and I'm gonna I'm going to experiment with possibly replacing some of my pop ups at the Blog Marketing Academy with some stuff that's in power that's powered by Engageifier, and if it works out the way that I hope. I might actually explore canceling my lead pages account only because I am one of those people that's primarily only using it for lead boxes. And because there's so many other options out there, I don't think that I have to pay a monthly rate for just that one function. Uh, Engageifier is not monthly. It's, it is a one-time thing. So those are a few options that I have come across. It allows you to very easily integrate various types of opt-in forms into your actual blog content. Now, it's, it's a really good strategy to look into. You want to have a way to do this because your content on your blog is going to be that area that gets the most attention. It, you know, it really is that. It, the people are not going to see your sidebar, not going to see your header, nearly to the degree that they're going to go right to your content because that's why people are there. You know, that it's pretty obvious, right? So because of that, because that's where everybody is naturally gravitating, any opt-in form that you put inside the content itself 
is going to be highly effective. And if you double that up with a very targeted lead magnet, you're going to get your highest opt-in rates that you will ever get with your blog by doing that. Very targeted lead magnets and putting the option to opt-in right inside the blog content itself. Extremely powerful strategy. Okay. So again, we talked about lead boxes, we talked about opt-in monster, we talked about Thrive Leads, we talked about the Global Content Blocks plugin, and we talked about Engageifier. And obviously, I would love to hear your favorite solutions. If I, you know, I know that there's other ones out there that I didn't mention, but the Coffee Break Blogging Podcast is not designed to be long, and it would be boring if I just talked about every plugin out there. So I'd love to hear what it is that you're using if you're using something different. So you could pop on over to coffeebreakblogging.com and you can pop into the uh, blog post for this episode, episode 73, and you can post a comment right there on the episode, right there on the blog, and uh, and let me know what you're using. But while you're over there at coffeebreakblogging.com, you can also download the seven stages to building an online business. And this seven stages graphic, it's basically an infographic, it's uh, you know a chart but it happens to be the exact roadmap that we're following with this podcast. We are currently in stage three of our overall business building venture here. Stage three having to do with building up our email list. So obviously that is very important uh, to the overall function of our business. And that's why we're spending the next several episodes on various aspects of this topic. So again, if you want to get the seven stages to building an online business, head on over to coffeebreakblogging.com and opt in and we'll keep you notified on new updates at the Academy, but we'll also send you that seven stages. Ooh, I'm in Florida and I don't know if you heard that, but I just had a major lightning and thunder strike right outside my, my uh, house here. That was interesting. Gotta love Florida. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I will see you in a few days with episode 74, where we're going to talk a little bit more about the idea of a squeeze page. I'll see you then.